بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان لائک آئی مینشن ارلی ایئر وی آر ناؤ موونگ آن ٹو سم ویری امپارٹنٹ ایسپیکٹس آف چیلنجز آف ایتھیکل لونگ اینڈ آلسو آف ایتھیکل بہیویئر ان انسٹیٹیوشنس اینڈ جسٹ لائک مینشن ارلی ایئر آن وین ایور وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ایتھکس اور مورالٹی دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ بلڈنگ بلاک از دا انڈیویجول ہم اور ہر سیل سو لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹمن وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ ایتھکس اور مورالٹی ایٹ اے گلوبل ایٹ اے ریجنل ایٹ اے نیشنل ایٹ اے کمیونل at a family or at an individual level the most important building block is of the individual and then naturally its uh, its collective consequences now ladies and gentlemen when we are talking about the kohlberg model to just to recapitulate on our last session the kohlberg model of human development basically envisages human development in three different levels and that is pre-conventional conventional and post conventional and all of these levels are then further broken up into six different levels and there is also a pre embryonic level which constitutes the seven level which is a post research addition to the kohlberg model and we were going to end this particular session by again correlating it to the eric erickson model so ladies and gentlemen to simplify the Uh, the uh, Kohlberg model, what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be looking uh, at its different stages. Now, when we look at its different stages, going beyond the semantics, I would actually like to divide these stages of human development according to age. And then I'm going to create an analogy between the age and the concepts which were researched by Kohlberg. Now, when we talk about the human being, then we can divide the human being into uh, six age groups. Now, the first one is when we are born. And when we are born, usually we can take it up to about three or four years. So level one would be the development of the human being from zero to about four years of age. Level two would be from four years of age to about eight or nine years, and then from eight and nine years up to 13, and then from 13 to 19, and then from 19 to 35, and then 35 and beyond. So, ladies and gentlemen, if we look at human development and the development of morality, let's look at this age group. Now, when a child is born and a child comes uh, into this beautiful world, uh, which we call Earth, then we see that that child has certain nuances and certain, uh, certain values and certain understanding. Now, that child, even though is a little baby, is a small toddler, that child has certain uh, characteristics. And one of them is that the child is fearless. No matter where he or she comes from, uh, a child in stage one is fearless. He or she does not care what are the consequences of any action. It's anything that fascinates him or her. Uh, he or she would see steam coming out from tea and they would grab the tea and maybe burn their hand. They would see two holes uh, on some uh, electronic switch and they would put their hand into it and get electrified. They would see something colorful and they might be sitting on a table and without looking at the consequences, they would just jump. So basically, we see that this little toddler or baby is fearless, is adventurous, uh, wants to explore, uh, has a, a positive feeling of everything, thinks that everything is right, there's nothing wrong. If you stop the child, don't do this, the child would not stop. If you say that this is dangerous, the child would not understand. If you say that this should not be done, the child cannot comprehend. And therefore, the child would indulge in whatever he or she likes or what, whatever he or she gets fascinated by. And the morality is that I want to do it and the whole world can say or stipulate anything and I am not going to consider it. And I am adventurous, I am brave, I am fearless and I want to explore the world and understand the world. So, if you see a child would try to use all of his or her senses 
to understand something. They see a marker on the floor, they would jump to get it, many a times not even feel the pain, they would pick it up, they would taste the marker, they would smell the marker, they would vibrate the marker and see its different movement, they might open up the cap of the marker and create abstract art altogether. So therefore, what are they doing? They are trying to understand the marker like no adult would ever do. And in all of this process, the morality of the child is, is that everything is possible and I do not consider anyone and I will do what I want to do. And therefore, his morality could be what we say is whimsical, is something which is spontaneous, is something which is proactive and consequences do not matter. Now, as the child tends to grow and moves on to the next age group, which is the second level, then we see that that child has a greater understanding, comprehends the fact that he or she is not alone, but there are many other stakeholders, that he or she has to consider the reaction of others, that his or her small world has expanded because first it was protected by the family, by the mother, by the father, by the siblings, by close ones and that was the whole world for them. But now the world is expanding, they are going beyond their home, they are venturing into uncharted territory, they are meeting unknown people, they are facing the consequences of the unknown, they most probably would be going to school where they have a totally new experience. And now they are also being rewarded and punished for the good or bad that they do. When they were a child, they could not be punished because they were so small. But now as they tend to grow older, with all the adventure and all the exploratory traits that they have within themselves, they are now confined. And they see that every action has some reaction. And they are trying to understand those reactions as they tend to move ahead. So their exper experimentation still tends to remain, but they understand that there are consequences. Then from that particular level, we go on to the next level, which is about 8 to 13. And in that age, what we see is conformity. We see that that child wants to conform to others. If he or she sees someone wearing a dress, they want to have the same dress, the same shoes, the same toys, want to do the same thing because someone else is doing it. So from all of that adventurism and uncertainty, now what we see is more certainty, more conformity, more accepting what others are doing, trying to conform, not trying to be different. And in that conformity, accepting what others are saying, actually being influenced by a syndrome which basically is called ke log kya kahenge, what will others say? And therefore, their decisions are swayed based upon what others like and dislike, not what they like or dislike. And when we move on to the next stage, then in that stage, which is the teenager stage, we see that there is a lot of stereotyping also. People consider that stage to be the age of rebellion. No, it's not the age of rebellion. Because actually, they are now being identified with groups. They have their friends, which mean a lot to them, sometimes even more than the family. The friends do something wrong, they will do it. Their friends do something good, they will do it. The friends want to go to a particular institution, they will go to that. Friends wear a particular style of dress, they want to wear that. They wear uniform. So actually, it's not the age of rebellion. It's actually, again, the age of stereotyping. They want to be identified with a particular group. And many a times, the affiliation with the group is more than the affiliation with the family. And morality, morality is defined by that particular group and the group's influence on that particular individual. The world has expanded. Now the world is in his or her palm. And in that expansion of the world, the person basically identifies the do's and don'ts based upon the group that he or she has developed over the different years 
which are called the age of teen. Post teen, what we see is that in level five, there are many new developments which take place. There is something which is called responsibility, something which are called new challenges of becoming independent or developing new relationships of understanding that the world is competitive, of basically moving forward and seeing that what can be done and what cannot be done. Also understanding that there are certain rights, rules, regulations and laws which have to be conformed or if they are broken, there would be different consequences. And that independence which previously used to prevail, the person does not have. And therefore, there is more fear in this age. There is more consideration in this age. There are more consequences of each action which are being taken in this particular age. And then when we go on to the last age, then we see that that person again comes back to conformity and actually to more conformity because the person might have a family. The person would have more responsibilities and therefore the element of risk has to be eliminated and many compromises have to take place and can actually lead to voicelessness which we are going to talk about very comprehensively in another separate session. So all of that tends to dawn upon that particular individual and the individual not only wants to survive as an individual but wants to survive as a family, as a community and as an institution. That person has stronger feelings towards others than sometimes to themselves. And that element of selfishness is now replaced with an element of wholesomeness, with an element of community and of family. And that becomes one of the guiding principles for that person. Now the seventh level is actually pre-level one and that is the embryonic stage. Because the human being's development of morality does not do only tend to manifest itself when we are out into the real world, but also it tends to manifest itself when we are within the womb of our mother. And as an embryo, we have a great understanding of what is happening and the reaction of the mother tends to also influence us and our development. So the Kohlberg model actually looks at all of this and we can create an analogy of the Kohlberg model actually with this whole age group concept and understand that how morality can begin and have its own implications. But in the Kohlberg model actually there is no age limit. There can be someone who is young and can be in level 6 and there can be someone who is in level 6 but actually at level 1 and anywhere in between and that all depends upon our experiences, our exposure, our assimilation and our understanding of how the world is reacting and moving around us and also our own inner perceptions which were developed in the womb of our mother when we were basically looking at the world through her eyes, through her ears and through her feelings. And all of that tends to encapsulate the Kohlberg model. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.